guys in the previous video we managed to write the code for um, the register login and validating user and the login part we were trying to uh, return the login results to the client so uh, we have to uh, put uh, the logic uh, that comes uh, in with the password uh, to create a uh, to put the payload inside the JW token using the password. So we need to create a token. In order to do that, I just come here and comment this part. It's a login. And I call, okay, token is equal to this dot. Uh, okay, so we have to generate the token, but uh, we have to actually um, import the uh, inside the constructor. Uh, what we need for the password. So I'm just going to okay import. Uh, so uh, as you know, password supports some uh, services to create the JWT. So one of them is JWT service. Okay, and it will uh, come sorry come from uh, I guess it was. Uh, yeah, yeah, next uh, next uh, JWT. Uh, we have to actually import uh, some inject model from Mongoose. Okay, we have add that. Okay, I'm, I'm just thinking if I'm missing something. Uh, I guess we have to add uh, inside the, I guess inside the DTO, we can add, we can add inside a schema. Uh, I'm going to call create in a schema for the token. So um, by using the test, this schema, we can actually save tokens inside the database. So we can uh, use it for a refresh token. We can cover it in, inside another video. So I'm going to make it uh, just make it wrapped up too much faster because uh, the registering is more important than other parts. So I have to go it faster from here, but we will cover it up soon, okay? So I come to the constructor. We have uh, this section, we have, I, I have to inject the JWT service. So I'm just going to private uh, JWT service, uh, which is actually inheriting from the, um, Inheriting from the JWT service, and uh, we have to create a token right now. I'm just going to say, okay, this dot, okay, okay, JWT. Uh, we're going to sign it with the payloads. Uh, so, what does it sign as? It actually put the payload data inside uh, the token, and the token will be in encrypted, not decrypted this time. So. Uh, you can actually test here if it is okay. Uh, I mean, to check the data inside the token, we can just say this data ability that uh, decode token. Okay. So the data inside the token value will be decoded data as we here inside, uh, we send the payload inside it. So we, we can actually test it, test it easily. Uh, one more thing is important here. We have to uh, set a date for the expiration date. Okay. So this is very important. Uh, the difference between the token value and the payload is that token value contains uh, the uh, actually expiration date, expiry time. Okay. So uh, in order to inform the client how much time it will be. Uh, the exact date we have to uh, actually decode the token to get expiration date and the date coming uh, being set uh, to this expression password methods are not the normal date so i show it what is that date is but uh, before that i want to actually uh, create a refresh token uh, from not the token but actually the date 
refresh token date. So a uh, user will be informed, uh, uh, informed when the uh, the refresh token will be expired. Okay. So uh, I'm going. I need to actually write a date. Sorry. Okay. I'm just going to. Yep. <laughs> Something's happening to me. Okay. So it has a new date. So date that set date. I want my refresh token uh, be expired tomorrow. Yep. Okay. So one day from now. Uh, I guess it's fair. And I wanted to cover to a string not a string but to ISO string. I guess it's true. So um, I need to format this. Um, anything is missing. Let me think. I guess it's true. Are you very fresh talking day? So um, after uh, catching the dates, catching the token, we have to actually uh, return this information to the user. So I need to uh, put it inside the wait here so we can actually uh, to send the desired data to the user. So uh, before that. I have to okay before before coming to um, returning the desired data, we have to create a token. That detail that yes you can add, you can just ignore this section, but I wanted to actually um, pull return inside the detail so we have actually we know what we should uh, actually return to the uh, data, return to the user. Okay. So uh, it will be a string called token. Mm. Pretty straightforward. We have to say okay, uh, expires in. I just called expires in. It's actually a string that said the token will be expired on that date. And um, refresh token expires in. Expires. Higher. Okay, I don't know. Expires in uh, and the, the type is date. Okay. Uh, one more thing uh, is expired, which is um, boolean. We're going to actually say okay if it is expired. Uh, what we have now, um, we can say okay read all of. A user um, still uh, the user ID. We, we can't pass this part. Um, but for now, I just I, I just want to return the user uh, ID inside here. Okay, we, we will remove this data. Okay. And it says okay. We, the type is not defined. Let's see. Okay, what we can do about it. Okay, let's pass this. I don't want to put it here. Um, what we need to know is this. Okay. I guess that's enough. So um, we can just um, return. Uh, what we can return here. I'm just thinking, I don't know what I'm thinking, but um, I'm thinking if anything is missing here. I don't know why I feel that, but um, here's just the token data inheriting from the token detail. Um, and put it here like this. Okay, so I can just say const token DTO. Um, can I find token DTO? Let me check. Okay, it's here. So, um, somehow it couldn't find token DTO. 
it think. Mm, so make it token PTO maybe this will help it. Okay, it's inside a token DTO. As I export another token. Hmm. Export plus token DTO. Am I doing this wrong or something, I guess? Token DTO. Um, yeah, I guess it has not a problem. Let's, let's try the code now. Let's see. So the um, token will be called um, the token. Sorry. Um, and expires in will be to token that. Expires in that and the refresh token expires in will be equal to refresh token. Um, expire date, not date. Yeah, refresh token is a string. Hmm. So it is also a string. It's a string and it is a date here. Hmm. What we are missing? Let me fix. Let's come here. And I see, okay, so a string is not stable to the type date, so let's go back here. Oh, okay, yeah. So we have to make this strong type. Okay, uh, let's keep their rep name for itself. I guess uh, it will solve automatically. Uh, and expired will be false. Um, so after that, we can just add return. So, <clears throat> I would have to return the token data. Okay. So, uh, mm, what we can do here, we can access, access token. Um, it can be this dot jwt dot uh, sign, sorry, sign. The payload. So again, I'm going to resign this guy and expire in this. So uh, let's recover this. Okay. So we can just pass this section for now. But remind that <coughs> um, I actually created this token data. So when actually um, we will save this inside the database. So when we use the refresh token, you actually know um, when the expiration for the expire uh, refresh token is. So when the cloud uses the refresh token, we will check this parameter to return a new token. So you can use that uh, logic I just said to you. So you don't need this parts for now, okay? So if you, if you did use refresh token, you have to do this, okay? Nothing else more. Yeah, pretty easy. So access token and expire date. So I, I had to decode it to access the uh, this information. Mm, but still everything seems to be pretty straightforward, pretty easy. We can just do it as either, okay? Um, pretty easy. So we don't need this and this. We have to just return the token inside the login. And valid user will come here and replace with the login, okay? So <coughs> we'll hear valid user, not the login. So come back to the controller. We have login, local auth card, we have me. So me is remaining, okay? We have to uh, somehow finish the me part either because we have login. We have the token in the user uh, hands, which is actually the token. Uh, and we have used the token in the JW auth card in me and we have the user information. 
So, um, what we can do, do here, we have, we can just, you know, um, I'm just going to make this const id uh, and rest. So, uh, from the command dot user. Uh, what I have done here, I'm just going to extract the ID from the user information inside the command and return the rest. So I do not need, I don't want to the ID be given inside me. I, I, I did this because maybe you have uh, some other information, but it's up to you. I just wrote this humble code for you. Okay. So you have a lucky, we have a me. One more thing is when we register, uh, it's up to you again. You can just write, okay, um, when registering here, first of all, check, okay, if the user exists or not. So in order to do that, uh, you can add another strategy. For example, exist to off guard, okay? And inside that strategy, you can just check. Okay, and you, you catch its user. If the user exists, you can just return a throw an exception and put that exist off guard uh, here. I mean, like this. Okay, exist, uh, convert this to this. Exists off guard. Okay, so it will throw error because it's not defined here. So um, I'm just going to create a void file and I thought exists um, that a strategy that is and another file with exists exists dot of the sorry it might be fifth of dot guard dot yes. Okay. So I'm just going to copy the code because it, it, it's quite similar uh, with this part. I'm just going to make this exist and here is password strategy everything is same just make this exist. Um, I'm just going to um, validate user. So how we can do this? <coughs> it comes with the username and the password. We get the user okay, again and if the user exists this time if the user um, or for example we can do this too if the user is not null maybe uh, we better check the null section because uh, sometimes Mongo returns a null and if user just just a passive okay uh, I'm going to call this user um, user already exists exception <coughs> pardon so if the user exists with their username actually I don't need a password but somehow it comes so it's a problem okay so inside the valid user um, I'm going to add the name of it called mm, get user by username just going to make it username let's call it a string and make it like this okay username so um, it will return the user for me so um, get user by username I just count the username and just this, if it is here, throw with an error um, because it does not. So um, inside the uh, messages again, we can add the folder called exceptions. So again, you'll write your own custom exceptions inside uh, nest here. Uh, it's up to you again, you can just. Um, you know um, what they say use another um, for example completely dynamic exception it's up to you okay 
uh, user already exists exception that ts okay so how this works you have to import um, http status uh, which is comes from uh, it has to be a, a yeah nostrils command and import um, rcp <coughs> sorry exception okay this word is right hard to write exception exception yeah uh, <coughs> so uh, it doesn't it doesn't come from rcp exception i'm going to tell you because that comes of it let's just start microservices so microservices to handle the exceptions easily you can add a uh, rcp exception okay i just wrote it wrong and uh, yeah okay miss dictation so i'm going to export class um, and what was that user all the exists exception which is inherited from the rcp exception and we have a comes Truck, yeah, constructor. Okay. And constructor, we have to, we can write super. So it actually overrides the exception. We desire, um, you know, we desire um, information like this. <coughs> and we can just not return this string to you, but convert this guy. So we have, we can just write, okay, status is something. And the error, uh, error is that string that we provided right now. Okay. We can do it like this either. It's still up to you. Uh, it can remain the battery because <coughs> user of the exits and the same. So we come here, it will allow us to actually import this from this exceptions and use it as you like. Okay. So actually we covered out some uh, custom exception writing or something like that. So come here and it will be exists of barn. Uh, we again exists. So um, by this defi defining method, we actually using the exist of guard here as a guard if you like the others. I come here and put it here and if I do this let's try to somehow bring the off guard okay so we have three guard uh, you don't need to use guards everywhere just for this purpose for authentication or authentication purposes it's okay so we are done here I guess in the account service just some other things remain inside the um api gateway okay so i close all <coughs> pardon me and i come here or we can just keep it remaining open and if i come up if you run start there inside the account service we will somehow try to test okay <coughs> is everything is okay and we come back to the API gateway to check okay uh, to allow user to make some authentication uh, limits uh, for example the credit request that we uh, will check if the user has access to it or not source okay before that we have to check in the concepts everything is all right this can do some dependencies I then the service okay <coughs> Pardon me again. So um, one more thing is missing that I remember, I guess, is this. So you have missed very big thing here, and it is inside the identity module. We have to um, some <coughs> add some comment. Okay. So inside imports, which is missing from here, I don't know how. Um, not here. Okay, so if we have passport, passport module, which is comes from the uh, list JS password. Uh, the next next thing is JWT. 
uh, module again. So uh, the more in, the most important thing that we miss is this. So we have to register the GAWT module, which we can define some options. Okay. So the options is diff uh, is important. Okay. So <coughs> if I come to this strategy, sorry. There was a secret key. So we can put the secret key inside the environment. I'm just going to put it here for easy, more easy user. So this secret key must be same the secret key you use in JWT uh, strategy. And <coughs> sign uh, options again. We can just add more things. For example, a uh, token can expire in 60 seconds or mm, I just might need more. Uh, you can add minutes, hours, whatever. Uh, make it uh, 10,000 seconds. I just, for test, you can just put whatever you like. So let me run the project. Uh, I hope we have, we, don't, we won't have any problem. Let's hope for it. Waiting. Yeah, starting completion much mode. It comes up. It found zero errors, which is pretty huge. And it's, it's running. Okay, cool. So I come to the API address and I try to sign up again. It throws an error. <coughs> so let's see. So it, it says unknown authentication strategy exists. Unknown authentication strategy exists. Hmm. So our strategy card couldn't figure it out. How it will do the trick? <coughs> yeah. So this is a bit tricky. Um, what we can do here? Hmm. Um. Mm, I guess we missed something more again. And uh, is it there's this um, identity module somehow went that side. So um, maybe and some providers <coughs> we missed some thing. We have to and tell inside the providers that we use these strategies, yeah? So, <coughs> otherwise it won't allow us to um, exist strategy, yeah. I guess, am I, am I writing wrong? Let me check. <coughs> Sorry. Um, it is right. Somehow we cannot figure that out, so just make it. Um, sorry. I have to make this guy here. And it exists. Okay. Yeah, somehow my import stuff is wrong. So I come to API repeat address and try to make it again. And uh, it says, okay, user already exists. Okay, so it comes to the four, uh, 400 status. And if I get we doesn't know how to handle that yet, but we know that error happened. And uh, for now, we won't cover the API gateway. We will keep it in the next video. But let me try it again with another email. Maybe it's not it. Make it two. Sorry, two. Yeah. Okay, it comes here. Get by username. Cannot read properties of null reading to object. It's in here. Login result. Mm -hmm. So we have to make this if it is null. Return the null, okay. And wait for it. 
Mm -hmm. we, we, we are waiting. And a system error, unauthorized exception. So how did this happen? Really? Uh, <clears throat> let me think. Let me think. Um, so exist a strategy. Mm, you are missing something. We are totally missing something. Which is here? Okay, the user is null and sends error. Okay. So we can just make email or um, username, sorry. Is username. Just just try to send the data. Coming data, many. I mean, uh, it, does, it, it, it just passed here, okay? Maybe we have made a mistake out there. So let me run it again. And bam, okay. So our user is created. We I come to the um, RoboMongo. I refresh and again, okay. So let me try to log in to the user. So again, we have error. So <coughs> currently properties of undefined. Okay, so we have this error here. It says undefined. So um, console.log, log in, and packet user. And let me come back to local strategy. And um, sorry, copy it. And uh, here is uh, make this validate. We will figure that where we did action. Was. I know where is it mistake because I did the command at that part. So uh, I the user as it validated user. And here inside the login, this is a section where I have the action on this. <coughs> so I have to say come in. Um, command user, just gonna do this. Okay, so let's make login again. We are waiting. Okay, let's go up. Validate user is this. Validated user is this. The command user is this. <coughs> So, command user is this, and okay, somehow, if you just remove that underline, maybe some update happened in S-Trace that underline dark is not included here. Okay, thanks a lot. Okay, we have our token back, okay? So, we have our token, we have expires in date. Very good. So. Uh, in the next video, we will cover out the request comes to the um, account service from the API Gateway by me, and we will use this access token, and we will cover out how we can actually uh, return some error when this request goes. Okay, so in the next, uh, see you next uh, next video. Have a good day.